I'm Ray Ranson, and I love the fucking Spoets. I'm Fred Michael, and I love everything from classic rock to classical music, and I fucking love the Spoets. I think a lot of people hate the Spoets. I think that with a uh, generally, club owners probably hate the Spoets. Um, I don't think you'd see a lot of religious folk at Spoet shows. No. Um, and it's so weird, too, that, that the band is based out of South Carolina. That's that's one really, really amazing. You would figure an avant-garde band like that, you know, New York City would be the perfect place for, for the Spoets. Right. But Hey, I'm Ray Ranson. Um... I've worked in the music field for about 10 years now doing merchandising for various acts. And my name is Fred Michael. I too work in the concert touring industry doing merchandise for various acts. Prior to that I had uh, done concert bookings for probably since 1990 actually. Uh, worked for a lot of local regional bands and have now moved up to national level touring. Who do you work for? Uh, I just finished uh, working for a band called Puddle of Mud. I've also worked for a company called Rock Allegiance, and we do the Rock Allegiance tour every summer. And I started with Ray here, uh, working for the band Papa Roach. And Ray, who, who's some of the bands you've worked for? Actually, we started with Sheldon. Yes. <laughs> we started with Sheldon um, in the merchandising field, and then um, Papa Roach as well, A Life of Agony, um, Kings of Leon, and my last big tour. I didn't I didn't want to say fun was probably Britney Spears at paid well, but you know. It was it was it was it was a check. <laughs> <laughs> uh were you at this Spoets uh Sheldon concert? Um I believe we might have it on VHS tape somewhere in my closet. Yes, I was I was there. I would anytime Spoets played within a let's see, I didn't really have a car back then, so anywhere my friends would drive I would be there. I re the things I remember about the Spoet show at the Cage, uh, in particular, is uh, I had asked Scott not to do any uh, pyro in there that night because um, the ceiling was basically made of paper. If you remember that, <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't it, and, it, and it hung real low, about three inches above the artist's head. And uh, there was later in the night there was some sex on the pool table. And I had also told Scott that it's a small room; it gets really crowded, so not to bust any televisions. But uh, Scott went ahead and brought a toilet from somewhere and set it in the middle of the floor. He did not break it. He let the crowd completely destroy it. And uh, there was porcelain busted commode all over the building. And I think that might have been the last time the Spoets played the cage. The cage, I don't remember too much. Maybe I was a little um, inebriated. Uh, Dan, the crippled guy that owned the place, he was uh, very confused by what was going on. And... Uh, I think he was equally confused and aroused by the sex on the pool table, but uh, that 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 might have pushed it a bit far. The, uh, the the big Mexican fight. I don't know what started it. It doesn't matter, but it was good times. It was a uh, packed by the bathrooms, and uh, the guy that ran the cage was in a wheelchair. So of course, you know, he he couldn't do anything. He would just be like, "Hey, you guys take care of this." We're like, "No, we want to film it because this will go great with the Spoets footage." You know, watch the fight. The sex on the pool table, the commode, the, everything. It was, it was, that's that that fault. Uh, the, uh, the Spoets have that history of, of, they play in these places, once. That that's it. You know, you better catch them there because they might not be back. Right? It, it's a, a visual and an uh, auditory assault, to put it mildly. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Has never seen a Spoets show. It, I can't really. You never know what you're going to get. That's the whole thing. I mean, you know you're going to walk in there. You might want to bring some safety goggles. You might want to bring a towel. You, you, you never know, but there's going to be things flying. There might be naked people. Well, no, no, not might be. There will be. Yeah. There's going to be just all kinds of stuff going on, but you're going to love it. You're going to, the shock value, it's going to be, it's going to be so fun. You won't even, you won't even realize what's going on. You're going to leave there exhausted, but having a great time. Yeah, I always had a general rule of thumb at a Spoet show also to keep my back to the wall and my eye on the door because things can and will break bad fast, but and also standing in the back you can observe everything going on because it, it's so fun just to see the people who have never seen the band or are not familiar with the band, especially if it's their first time seeing the band, is just the, the look on people's faces generally halfway through the first song it's either a look of confusion, disgust, 
uh, or pure joy. That's the yeah. only. That's the only way to really describe all it. All together. Yes, they are all, all together. It's it's almost like Jonestown. I love bringing my first dates to the spell shows. Yes. Because yes. you go to the day, you're like, yeah, come on, let's go to the spell show. Okay, fine. And you get there, and they witness all this, and they're and they're in shock. And then Scott comes over, who just Scott probably just grinded somebody or 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 smashed something. And after the show, I'm like, hey, this is my friend Scott. And Scott's like. Hello, it's very nice to meet you. After yeah. he just brutalized somebody, yeah. you know. I mean, I, I remember seeing them multiple times, if I'm not mistaken, at Congress Street Station. They played quite a few times at Congress Street because we all knew everybody there. And it was like, come on, they only did that one. They only smashed that once. They're not going to do it next time. Come on, have yeah. them back. Yeah. Well, twice is more than once. Right. So, you know, that was a, that was a multiple. Every, again, mentioning everything from pure joy to I actually saw a woman vomit at a Spoet show one time. And I don't think it was from drinking. I think it was from just utter disgust. Yeah. Which I thought was was pretty cool. Was that Bay Street Bar? That may have been at Bay Street Bar. I know. I know why she threw up then. Yeah. That was that was the night of the mouse cannon. <laughs> I was I was firing mice into the audience. <laughs> I yes, I do remember that. It was like a potato gun, wasn't it? <laughs> I do remember that. A noise house is a show. Freddie and I and our friend Brad did, and Sam Johnson, rest in peace. Yeah, we did a TV show like six years on cable access, and it was all about music and just, just basically whatever we wanted to do. And I think Brad was sick one time, and, and uh, we called Scott. I'm like, hey, can you be a co-host? We're like, yeah. And it's kind of like a club reaction. Cool, okay, cool, come down. And then it sits, like Scott says, it sinks in, and we go, do we just ask, ask Scott from the Spoets to come be a host on TV? Oh, God, what are, what's no? But it was perfect. Scott was great. It was it was a natural. Um, we got a couple episodes. Did a couple episodes, and um, it was real fun. The the one liners for those shows were killer. They were great. And today we have a guest host. We have Scott. Scott is back with us today. Hello, hello. Uh, hope all y'all um, got to the show. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. You know, we bust a couple of TVs, whoop somebody's monkey ass, two monkey asses, as a matter of fact. A little blood, something for the whole family. Bring the kids. Have a picnic. Picnic. Yep. Yeah. Little thing was it was great. Me and Brad and all the the South Carolina family was there. Yeah, yeah. We did some moshing. Yeah, yeah. And re remember? You, tell me, tell me if anyone remembers the last time we had a good band like this in. Was it was, was are we are we talking eighty six here nineteen eighty six with uh, Circle Jerks? Yeah, uh, the the last good band that I saw in Savannah was, well, was it what, what was it? I don't know. I don't even remember. Uh, That's I, how long it's been. I think I think the last band of that well, it could have been Killdozer. Killdozer was pretty good, but Killdozer's not DRI. You know a band I miss at night at Big Gas. At, what's it called? Big, Big Gasoline Cycles. Big, Big Gas, Gas Cycles. Yeah. It was kind of a an old uh, warehouse gas station, maybe. Uh, very. It was a very industrial looking building, and they did a lot of the. Uh, punk rock shows there and that was kind of that that venue was kind of my first introduction not only to the spoets but to that whole uh for lack of a better way of describing it gutter punk scene was there at in that building and there was a another local band that played that night called damod that's right which is where philip from kylesa came from and yeah. yeah, that was the night philip punched me out Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that I, history. I, I, one at one of the night, I, one one <laughs> night at Big Gas. I don't know if that's, we played with them a couple of times there. Buzz Oven too, and yep, uh, that was the first place I saw Buzz Oven actually. Then we've got something. Buzz Oven is out of rehab. Uh oh. Reformed the band. It's their first tour out. Kurt's got a bunch to prove, and he has challenged the Spoets to a Texas cage match show to the death. Only one band. We'll walk away from that show. Halftime will be me and Brad mud wrestling for a while. Yeah, then, uh, we got Demod playing that and Sour Vane. And <laughs> Played at remember that nice fancy um, uh, the Crossroads Bar and Grill, all the expensive ten thousand dollar guitars hanging on the wall. And then you know <laughs> Scott's like, come down and, and see. And it's like, oh, I know that place. It's like a museum. It's very pristine. And you walk down there, and you hear glass breaking and people crying. And I was like, this is awesome. This is this is perfect. That bar didn't last long after that either. 
they pretty yeah. much they pretty much closed down. The, uh, I remember going to our first few Spode shows, and you're kind of in shock. Well, I was kind of in shock because I was a pretty sheltered, mainstream kind of kid. And you're having fun, and you're watching all these fascinating things happening, and the chicks, and the smashing, and the grinders, and the sparks. But then you don't realize it, but when you leave the show, I'm sitting there singing, Don't Tell Me About Jonestown, or Kung Fu, you know, the song's actually sunk in your head, but you don't realize it until you leave, you know, you're singing them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I didn't think I caught the songs, but you do. I'll never listen to the I Dream of Genie theme the same, the same way either. It's... <laughs> You're going to get, and they, they did it anyway, so then they got mad and banned them again. They knew what they were getting from the Spoets, you know, you always know what you're going to get. Well, actually, no, you don't know what you're going to get, that, I should say that. But the one thing about the Spoets is they definitely packed the place. Yeah. They, there yeah. was definitely going to be a crowd there. It was a very mixed crowd, but uh, there was definitely always a crowd there. It was mixed. People drank, they partied, they had a good time, and it was true that you could get your industrial kids, your goth kids, your metal crowd. Everybody came together to hang out and watch Spoets, mm -hmm. and it was, it was kind of cool. I don't know how the band managed to get rebookings in Savannah because word of mouth spread so fast, and... I don't know what other bar owners thought. Oh, maybe they'll be different this time. You know, they, they knew what they they knew what they were getting, but yet when it happened, they're like, "Oh my God, they're never playing here again." Right. But they knew what they were getting. You know, it's not like they're going to turn into a you know a poison cover band the next show. You know, it's right. still the Spoets. Right. So I, I don't know. I don't know what was 